Well, you've given, you've given a couple of examples as yeah. to why one might consider him a saint. I mean, I really have no doubt if I'm allowed to say that the man's in heaven, uh, but um, but that he should be a canonized saint. I mean, you said he had a friend who said he always thought about God. He would go to mass frequently. He would pray the rosary, presumably, because of the worn out rosary that you mentioned. Uh, he spread joy. People said, I mean, wh what else? Well, what I, think, else I think one of the great arguments. <laughs> Pretend I'm the devil's yeah, advocate yeah, and you've yeah, really got to convince yeah, me here. Yeah, you got to do a better job too. Because <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, you have to convince me as devil's advocate and you're not even coming close. No, um, I think that one of his, uh, the great arguments in favor of his of his sanctity is the fact that people who encounter Chester want to become Catholic. And it's not just his great arguments for the faith, and he's which is are brilliant. I mean, you you read his books, you want to become Catholic, but you're drawn to his goodness. That's what you're drawn to with Chester. And his goodness comes out of his words and out of his, out of the pages. That that's what you're struck to. You're drawn to someone who clearly is virtuous, and I want what he has. And uh, I think that's one of the great arguments for his his sanctity. Um, I uh, I think one of the uh, the things that that will all, uh, that will continue to be used against him is an accusation that he was anti-Semitic. Okay, and um, give us give us the steel man argument as to why he may have been, and then show well, us why he wasn't. You know, he he made some critical comments about the Jews, but he also made critical comments about Americans and about Germans and about Scots yeah. and about my people, the Scandinavians. What uh -huh. he said about them are. But, but they, what did he say about the Jews? He, Let's he, see if we can get banned yeah, from YouTube. Go. So, well, I think his his uh, main argument about the Jews is that they were a people in exile and they suffered from being a a nation without a country. Uh -huh. And so, wherever they were, they were outsiders. And uh, and so he he considered them foreigners in England because their their interests were for the Jews and and not for the English. That was his argument. Right. And and this is someone who grew up with Jewish friends and treated them as if this is a sim it sounds like a similar critique to what Protestants had of uh, Catholic uh, Catholics in America. Yeah, Your yeah, allegiance is to Rome. Yeah, we can't trust you. Yeah, and that that was that was part of part of. His, but he said this made him a Zionist. This is why he defended the the right of the of the Jews to have their own homeland. And the Jewish Zionists, you know, recruited Chester to help ah, to help them. And so they were. There were lots of Jews who really valued uh, Chesterton's so what was friendship. His, what was his argument for a Jewish state then? That or, that they should have one. That they should why? have one. Yeah. But why? Because they were they were a historic nation and they deserved the their their own country uh, and they they had been exiled from their own country and they deserved to have their country back. So he was accused of being anti-Semitic on one side, and then you've got these the, people wanting a Zionist to say to on the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and he also warned. That there would be an outbreak of violence against the Jews before Hitler came along, and huh. and he said the stupidest thing that the German people could have ever done in 1933 was to elect Hitler, and then when Hitler started going off, off against the Jews, he said that Hitler's made now he's made the worst mistake. He's he's gone after the the most famous scapegoat in history. Well, you've shown us why he's not anti-Semitic, but I asked you to steal man why he As, might be. Yeah. So what are the lines or what did, what did he say that what, people look at out of oh, context, perhaps? Yeah, and, well, sure. Like, you know, he'll he'll make comments about hook noses, okay. uh, things like that. But he also makes comments about Roman noses, too. Right, so, right. So, you know, so every argument I get to so give So we're probably you this, a lot more sensitive to this after yeah, the Second World War yeah. in a way that we may not have been prior to it. Absolutely. And I, yeah. I think it's unfair to, to view him sometimes through that lens. Right. Um, and I think it, the whole argument is unfair, and I think it's unfounded. And I think sometimes these arguments are simply repeated as a way of just dismissing Chesterton wholesale without having to encounter his his great arguments, you know, for for the Catholic Church and and for the truth that, mm -hmm. that the Church teaches. If you can get rid of him with just one quick argument, well, he's anti-Semitic, so no, nothing he says is worth anything. Yeah, and. That's I think sometimes it's used in that way. Right. I think most of the time I believe the accusation is ignorant, but sometimes it's just simply malicious. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but it's rubbish nonetheless. I Not believe it's rubbish. Understand. And I'm yeah. gonna, the number three book that I'm on that list of books. I, I'm going to be trying to do a, a full exhaustive uh, yeah. argument uh, to defend Chesterton against all the different accusations. But we did in Gilbert Magazine, the magazine we published a few years ago, have. One issue devoted to the mm. to, and I think it's I think it deals deals with all the arguments very well. 
Well, that's one kind of objection. I guess another one would be that maybe he drank too much. Maybe is that is that that's one I hear. Yeah, that argument is made. Or that he was too... And that he um, ate too much. Ate too much, yeah. drank too much, smoked too many cigars. Yeah, and so uh, I've, I've, I've written about that too. Chester actually ate very little. He had some sort of a glandular condition that was responsible for his great weight. And uh, all of the eyewitness accounts were amazed at how little he ate. Um, I don't believe there's any evidence of him ever being drunk mm-hmm. in public or, uh, you know. Uh, so we don't, we don't see him as a... Uh, as someone indulging in that in that sense, but who d- defended defended drinking as uh, this other guy who was saying, uh, who's that guy they said came as a drinking and eating and and behold a glutton and a I forget yeah I'm sure I, history's written yes yeah, so anyway, anyway some guy who was yeah. accused of eating and drinking was called a glutton and demon and all that stuff yeah. but he defended he defended <laughs> you said because it was the it was the every man's yeah. Especially the every man was who was being under attack by <coughs> by the Puritans and you yeah. know and 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 the really the killjoys. Uh, this yeah. is a, a a customary historical thing. Is is the fruit of the vine and the yeah of of the wheat to the grain. So and, and then um, yeah, so they they think he would be ill tempered in his in his uh, temperance. And Chester was actually a defender of what he called true temperance, which is not you know abstaining, but to everything in its, in its proper proper use, but he knew how to abstain. He did. He, he went through fasting just like anybody else uh, mm-hmm. in, in the Catholic Church does. He 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 knows the rhythm of the season, which is the time you partake and the time you don't partake. So, what do you think uh, is likely to happen with Chesterton and sainthood? I mean, what's the trajectory? In yeah, that? we uh, we do believe that there will be a bishop who will be opening the cause within the next year or so. I really think we're, we've got two. Two bishops who are in dialogue with who are very interested in opening his cause, and once the cause is opened, then then we start getting serious of of appointing a postulator and doing doing the hard work. And I, I don't know the answer to this. So what you just handed a card, a, a prayer card, you know, to Chesterton. What's the rules for praying to people who haven't been recognized as well, servants of God? The, or? the only the only way anyone ever becomes a, a saint. Boom. Done. Yeah. So it's excellent. It's, it, I never, the, yeah. Obviously, that's the case. The Catholic <laughs> Church doesn't say, who are we going to make a saint this week? Yeah. It's a group of people who are devoted to a particular figure. They go to the Catholic Church and say, we think this guy that we're devoted to is a saint. He's been yeah. answering our prayers. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it starts with the prayer card. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.